Hey everybody, Sean here and I hope you're doing well. Richard Lorenzo Jr. is who we're looking at today, so let's jump right in. Many of you have expressed concern with Richard and today we're going to understand why. If you aren't familiar with Richard Lorenzo Jr., this is his channel and as we can see, he's got 138,000 subscribers that he's influencing. The video we're looking at today was shared by Christy, so thank you for this. Now, I'm not going to go as far as Jack Smack did and say that this guy is unsaved, but there are definite problems with what he's teaching and doing. And as you can see, he's got a large support team that he is deceiving, just like we see with all these Demon Slayer crowds. So let's take a look at this train wreck of a video. He starts off counseling a couple that is not married and is engaging in fornication. I thought, hey, that's good, but it goes downhill fast. So I'm going to pray for you guys. I just want you guys to repeat after me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I repent. I repent. I repent. Of fornication. Of fornication. Tonight we're done. Tonight we're done. Until marriage. Until marriage. We're going to be celibate. We're going to be celibate. In the physical. And in our heart. And in our heart. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. The curse is broken. The curse is broken. We, re we rededicate our lives to you. We rededicate our lives to you. So these are supposedly saved people that are rededicating their lives to Jesus. So there was no curse to be broken, just sin to be confessed. And now we get into the nonsense of casting demons out of believers. And I'm going to allow this to play out fully to point out a few things. So please bear with me on this. Right there. In Jesus' name, right now, everything unclean needs to leave. Every unclean spirit of fear, come out. Come out. Every unclean spirit of fear, leave. 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 All anxiety, leave. All witchcraft on the mind, leave right now. Loose. Come out. Come out. Come out. All rejection, go. 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 Leave. 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 Out. Out. All the way. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every unclean spirit. Out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Go to the abyss. Go to the abyss. Go to the abyss. So we start off with the usual nonsense we see and him having to repeat over and over again for these demons to come out of this born again believer. And it sounds like he's following Isaiah Saldivar's lead with telling them to go into the abyss. But of course, they aren't leaving like demons did in the Bible, which is why he has to repeat this over and over again. Isaiah actually has done a video with him just recently, and by the looks of it, he's an ex-warlock. Isn't it interesting that all these ex-atheists and ex-warlocks and witches, just like Jenny Weaver, all seem to be into this Christian deliverance ministry? I'm more convinced each day that these people haven't changed and are being used by the enemy to deceive. And let's be honest, Christian deliverance is big business these days. A simple Google search will show you that Isaiah Saldivar is worth somewhere between a million and $12 million. And through just YouTube, Richard is making over $300,000 a year as well. This is all public knowledge and this movement is big business. Leave, come out the mouth, come out. All of it go, all of it go, everything go. Every witchcraft spirit come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, come out, come out, come out. Jezebel, go, 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 go. There she goes. Come out, Jezebel. Come out, Jezebel. Come out, Jezebel. Suddenly he knows the demon's name. But regardless, why is he talking so long to them? This means they are resisting the power of Jesus in a so-called believer. Come out. Like seriously, this is embarrassing. How many times can a demon ignore the name of Jesus? They can't, which is one more sign that whatever is happening here is not true deliverance from a demon from someone filled with the Holy Spirit. Fine! Come out, 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 leave, leave, where's the Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. And there we have the commonly used word fire. But with this crowd, that's usually calling down a good fire of God on people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This time it's for casting demons out. 
And I guess him pressing his finger onto her back is another method because what he's doing is obviously not working. Come out in the name of Jesus. I come at you at the umbilical cord when you came in, in her mother's womb. Right now, we tear that stronghold down. We tear that legal right down. All the way out, doesn't it? Come out. Come out. All the way out. All the way out. All the way out. All the way out. All witchcraft. Come out. Come out. 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 Out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Out in Jesus' name. Oh, he thought he had success, especially after three more uses of Jesus' name. But nope, that demon just keeps on resisting our Lord and Savior's name. Ow! Ow! Ow in Jesus' name. Ow! Ow, my friend. There she goes. So what happened there, we can only guess. If she is a so-called Christian and did have a demon, then she didn't have the Holy Spirit in her and is not saved. It's just demons playing with people that call themselves Christians but have not actually been born again. But then he says this. I receive the Holy Ghost. You wanna receive the Holy Ghost right now? What's he talking about? Do you want to receive the Holy Ghost? If she's saved, she already has the Holy Ghost in her. And John 14, 16 says, he'll be with us forever. And if she isn't saved, then she needs to repent and put her faith in Christ to be born again, not just repeat what he says. I receive the Holy Ghost. You wanna receive the Holy Ghost right now? Say this, say, Jesus, fill me with your spirit. You too, you ready? And now she's crying again, when a second ago she was happy to be free, supposedly. And if she's just had demons cast out of her, she needs to get saved and receive the Holy Spirit before she can tell Jesus to fill her with the Holy Spirit. And as we've spoken of before, receiving the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit are two different things, yet he's including them in the same sentence. I receive the Holy Ghost. You want to receive the Holy Ghost right now? Say this, say, Jesus, fill me with your spirit. You too. You ready? Let's fight. Let's fight. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on. 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 Come now he's telling her to speak in tongues, which can't happen unless God gives her that gift. But he seems to think that him and a bunch of others speaking in gibberish will make that happen. Thank you, Jesus. He has a good. He has a good. Tomorrow baptism. Amen. God bless you, God. God bless you. And everyone stands around cheering like something biblical actually just happened when if they read their Bibles, they'd know that it was just a mess of biblical things mixed with unbiblical stuff. But that's where we are in time right now, and the hyper-charismatic, demon-slaying world is destroying Christianity. But we're just getting started, and now he's gonna destroy Christian deliverance in this next part. Rage ain't me, lust ain't me. It's not supposed to be in here. I renounce you, it's an eviction notice, get out. I'm renouncing you, you're not supposed to be in here. I know you're in here, but you're not supposed to be in here and you come out of agreement. When you do that, the devil has to go. It's an eviction notice and he has to come out. So there you have it. If you have demons in you as a Christian, you can command them to come out and they have to leave. So you don't need these phony deliverance leaders like Richard casting demons out of you. And I'm gonna start praying. The minute I start praying, you guys, they're gonna have to go. If there's any demons, it has to come out. And you guys are gonna receive deliverance. Ah, but then he switches back to himself praying for them. Why? He just said they could do it themselves. And if they can do it, then these must all be saved people he's speaking to. Unfortunately, nobody there can seem to figure this out. And I'm gonna pray for healing afterwards too. Y'all feel the power of God right now? Yes. And it's because of the unity. It's the unity. Brings the anointing. Amen. 
and he's got to rally the crowd about some anointing they can feel because they're together. Just like when Paul said, Peter, can you feel the anointing around us? And Peter said, yes, Paul, I surely do. Then Matthew jumped in and said, that's the power of the anointing, brothers, because we are standing together. All kidding aside, if we're bringing things back to what's really read in the Bible, it just shows to how silly this really is. All right, so guys, I want you guys to say this. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Say, I renounce. I renounce. I renounce the spirit of the spirit. I renounce the spirit of Come on. The spirit of Isabel. Jezebel. And they teach that this Jezebel spirit has become an actual spirit that indwells people when the Bible doesn't actually mention a Jezebel spirit doing that. And this girl couldn't even get the name right. This is the blind leading the blind. Now say, in the name of Jesus, say every unclean spirit come out of me. Every unclean spirit come out of me. Right now. In Jesus' name. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, every unclean spirit come out in Jesus' name. Jezebel, come out. But wait, they just all did a self-deliverance prayer. He told them before that when they did that, Satan had to leave. So why is he laying hands again? Come out, come out, 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 let's go. Come out of here, come out now. I'll break you at the umbilical cord. You can't stay, right there, yo. Every witchcraft spirit come out too. All witchcraft go, all witchcraft go and Jezebel come out. I destroy the altar of Baal set up against her right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Jezebel, you have no legal right. She's confessed, she's forgiven, she's let go. Say this, say, I forgive everyone who's hurt me. Forgive everyone who's hurt say, me. Say, I forgive, I forgive my mother. I forgive my mother. I forgive my father. I forgive my father. And every man that's hurt me. And every man that's hurt me. Say, Jesus, deliver me. Jesus, deliver me. Amen. Amen. All right, now stay right there. And you'll notice this is the power of suggestion. They always say something like, there it is, to coax them to manifest. But nothing happened, so no, there it wasn't. Jezebel, come out. Out, 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 out. Jezebel, come out. Come out of the body, come out of the soul. Right now at the umbilical cord, I command you to come up and come out now. We break the power that you have. You have no legal right. Come out, Jezebel, out, out. Fire to the body, fire. We feed you to the dogs. Leave, leave. Come out of her. You have no legal right. And every witchcraft attack too. All fear, anxiety, all the rejection. The rejection that came in, the bullying. Right now, in Jesus' name. All rejection leave, right there. But no, not right there, it didn't go. And why do you have to just come out with so many names? Jesus cast them out with a word. Paul told the spirit in the girl to leave and it did. This is all so phony. Go. Right there, right there. Good, good sir. Yeah. Good. And there's another success. He goes on to pray for people and we see the same drama going on and here's another form of manipulation we see from him and others like Catherine Crick. I command you on the count of three to come out of her body. Full freedom. Nope. I break every generational altar. I break every word curse spoken over her. Every agreement she came in with right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. I destroy the altar of bow too so now you have no power. Yep. Now you can't stay. Now you can't stay. Yep. One. Two. Three. This is also manipulation because our minds have been programmed since childhood to do something or start something on the count of three. On your mark, get set, go. On the count of three, one, two, three, do this. So this is no different and something we never saw in the Bible. Just tell the demon to leave. Now this meeting continues and he prays for more and more people, which makes no sense because he told them they could do it themselves. And then we get to this. Say, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Lord, Lord fill me with your spirit. spirit. Say, baptize me in your power. Baptize, baptize me in your power. power. Give me the gift of tongues. Give, Give me the, the gift, gift of tongues. tongues. Say, Jesus, I want more of you. Jesus, I want more of you. Fill me with your spirit. Baptize me with more power. Give me that gift of tongues. Jesus, do this. Jesus, do that. Pretty bossy if you ask me. Yet here's the result. All right. Now everyone, we're gonna pray in the Holy Ghost. You ready? Let's go. Yeah, tell my toe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
A bunch of babbling goats following this deceiver. No translator, God not being glorified in any way. Once again, where in the Bible did the apostles ever say, okay, now let's everybody pray in tongues and then go around babbling in people's faces while laying hands on them and teaching them how to do this? Never, because it's not biblical. Sadly, we see that girl from the start that had demons cast out even have more demons cast out later on, which tells us that they came back because Richard said she was free. And these are supposedly Christians with the Holy Spirit. So according to these demon slayers, this is the life a Christian can expect to have. Demons cast out and demons come back and the cycle repeats itself forever because to them, the Holy Spirit isn't strong enough to keep someone free from having demons in them. But after her second deliverance, he says this. They're gone. Hey, we don't focus on demons, we just cast them out. They, look, she's free, she spoke in tongues. What does that even mean? She's free, she spoke in tongues? Since when in the Bible did someone having a demon cast out of them ever result in speaking in tongues? How about never? But now he does what I can only guess is some sort of a leading person to Christ. That's it. Do you understand what giving your life to Christ means? Yes. Surrender, walk in it out. You're about to sign a military contract. If you deal with rage, bro, murderous thoughts or murderous feelings, you used to fight a lot. Because you, you, you have rejection from your father? Yeah. Yeah, bro. You're going to get free. I used to deal with the same thing. Yes. What else are you dealing with? I have cancer and some right other now. things that I've dealt with, and there's a lot of fear. There's, there's a fear that surrounds me that cancer will come back. It's not coming back. We're going to break the cycle of fear. Because it's already, it's already left your life. But if you come back in agreement with it, you love your life. Okay. Say, Jesus, Jesus, I'll surrender my life to you. Jesus. I'll surrender my life to you. You're my Lord. You're my Lord. You saved me by your blood. You saved me by your blood. I confess all my sins. And I'm washed by the blood of Jesus. I'm washed by the blood of Jesus. I believe you died on that cross. I believe you died by that cross. And you beat every demon. You beat every demon. You got buried. You got buried. And you rose on the third day. And you rose on the third day. To prove that you're God. To prove you're God. Come to my heart. Come to my heart. Come to my mind. Come to my mind. My entire being. My entire being. I surrender. I surrender. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Fill me and deliver me. Fill me and deliver me. Heal me. Heal me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, could someone be saved by reciting that prayer? Yes, because only God knows their hearts and all they've gone through with until that point. But for the most part, this is what is creating false conversions in the church. One, two, three, repeat after me. Mention sin, but don't even know what sin is to God. And they say all the right things, but really is it for a self-serving purpose like not having cancer come back? or they're just feeling emotional in a moment and perhaps some worldly sorrow. So once again, could someone be born again that way? Yes, but I think it's very rare and most true conversion happens when a person is brokenhearted because of their sin against God, they realize they deserve hell and they cry out to Jesus because they understand and believe his sacrifice on the cross. But he follows up with this prayer by saying, so it's just, the, you need to get rid of that spirit of fear. Yes. You gotta walk in that, that, uh, that authority. Yes. It can't come back. It can't come back. We have authority over all sickness by the stripes he took. Yes. And now comes teachings like we see from some that we can never get sick as Christians. And if he really believed we have authority over all sicknesses, then he should be going around and clearing out hospital wards daily. This is real, like this is something you need to let Feel your soul. Yes. We have the fullness of healing where in, the, in our spirit man, our spirit woman. 
The problem is, is that our soul doesn't come in agreement with it and we block God's power. And so you got to walk in that, like I'm free from cancer. It's not coming back by the stripes you took on the cross. It's not coming back. That's it. It's not coming back. It's not coming back. And the power of the Holy Ghost, the filler, you keep praying tongues? Right, uh, that's the thing, that's the issue. You need power, you ready? You ready? Why do people listen to this? Scripture does not say that we get power by speaking in tongues. The power of the Holy Spirit in us is not the same as power in speaking in tongues. Open up your mouth, pray, louder. That's it, louder, louder, come on. Robot side, you want to speak in tongues too? Come right here. Come on, you praying in tongues, mom? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This guy's another Torben Sondergaard, and this whole laying of hands and imparting tongues is not biblical. Tongues is one of God's gifts, and we don't all have the same gifts. When the Jews on Pentecost received the Holy Spirit, they spoke in tongues, actual languages that people of all nations could understand, praising God. And when Paul laid hands on the Gentiles that believed and received the Holy Spirit, they also spoke in tongues to show it was the same Spirit of God entering them that entered the Jewish believers. This was a unique situation, and no scripture says that we can lay hands and impart tongues today. So people that are doing and teaching this need to be avoided. You ever done that? Amen. You, got, you ever done that? Amen. You just need a power. But tongues isn't power. You just need a power. You got it. Huh? It's that simple. Because the Holy Spirit already was inside you. So all the people that have spoken to us for the first time, 30 minutes a day for two weeks, praying tongues in your secret place. I'm not being religious and legalistic. I'm trying to help you. Nowhere in scripture are we told that praying in tongues 30 minutes a day for two weeks is going to help us. So why is he? And apparently, many of them spoke in gibberish for the first time and now falsely believe they have the gift of tongues. It's, it's training. You go to the gym. You lift weights for the first time, oh yeah, I put up 145, cool, now you gotta put up 225, so what do you gotta do? Keep going. You gotta exercise your gift to, in order to increase it. It's like healing, I didn't just start, people didn't start getting out of wheelchairs the first time I prayed for somebody. No, it was first it was a headache, then it was like little things, and then I just started getting more faith. Oh, they're gonna get up out of that, oh my goodness, they got up out of it. Oh, cancer go, oh, it really went. You move in faith. So you see what I'm saying? Build up your faith, build it up by Rama to Rebese. And you might, you're gonna be like, man, that sounds stupid. Yeah, it does sound stupid because it's not languages that anyone can translate. And if you are laying hands and seeing people get out of wheelchairs and cancer actually leaving, then you got some serious blessings, bro. You should be going out and healing a lot more people rather than preaching nonsense about speaking in gibberish to folks in the crowd. My friends, we're only about two thirds through this video, but I am done. Richard Lorenzo Jr. is yet another false teacher wrapped up in the demon slayer crowd that is keeping non-believers that think they're Christian in bondage to having demons in them. If you do follow Richard Lorenzo Jr., please watch the playlist on deliverance here on Revealing Truth to hear all the false things these demon slayers are teaching debunked by scripture. Remember, Jesus warned us in Matthew 7 that many would call him Lord on Judgment Day and claim to have cast out demons in his name, but Jesus never knew them and they will go to hell. Don't let that be you. We're going to leave it here for today, but as always, feel free to leave your thoughts below and until next time, take care and God bless.